Let me ask you this. What do you think the most recognizable thing from Naruto is? If you said the Naruto run, you'd be right. Militaries have trained to counter it now, so don't even try it. But I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about the other most recognizable thing from the Naruto series, that being hand signs. These were the things that we all wanted to learn how to do and got us interested in sign language. Tell me I'm wrong. But as time has passed, slowly, more and more ninjutsu are no longer requiring hand signs, and I want to take a look at some of the reasons why that may be. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you are subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. From the very beginning of Naruto, hand signs were the thing that we noticed the most. Based upon animals of the Chinese zodiac, the hand seals were used to help a shinobi focus their chakra. These have been used by pretty much everyone to a degree, with even one or two hand signs being thrown by the Ten Tails itself. But as the Naruto series began escalating towards its climax, this system that had been with us from the very start began to slowly but surely disappear, becoming even rarer in the Boruto series. When the series first began, the very first ninjutsu we see our main character learn is Shadow Clone Jutsu. Despite not being based on the Zodiac, it at least had a hand sign. It allowed him to make as many Shadow Clones as he wanted, generally based solely upon how much chakra Naruto had at that time. That being said, he had a lot of chakra as an Uzumaki, Ashura reincarnate, and Jinchuriki to the strongest tailed beast under the Ten Tails. Naruto was just a perfect storm for a functionally infinite chakra well. The system would be explained to us and we would come to understand that ninjutsu can be cast based on hand signs. The types of hand signs used determine the type of ninjutsu being cast, with stronger ninjutsu requiring more hand signs. This system also allowed for strategy as the characters could only weave signs so fast. While some some could go faster, others could not. That became a stat we would see in the data books later on. Ninjutsu. Do you remember when Zabuza and Kakashi were weaving signs to the water release water dragon bullet technique? Remember when Kakashi had to copy it with his Sharingan? It not only served as a penalty for a powerful jutsu, but it also showed the intricate nature of ninjutsu, the skill required to pull off such a thing, and was used to strategically psych out Zabuza who was beginning to give into the belief that the Sharingan could actually see into the future based on an old rumor he'd heard, something Kakashi was using to his full advantage. Do you know how many hand signs had to be performed for such a powerful ninjutsu? A whopping 44. Do you know how many it takes now? Well, uh, I haven't counted, but I can definitely tell you it is far less. And that became a bit of a trope in the series. Some techniques required a certain skill that required no hand signs. These techniques were considered legendary skills, such as Minato's crown jewel technique, the Rasengan. That technique never required a single hand sign to perform. It became a bit of a running theme that the techniques of legend didn't require hand signs, and that's what made them so powerful. Beyond the impact of the ninjutsu, its other boon is that it required nearly no extra time to do. This was how the Rasengan worked for a time. It was originally such a difficult technique to learn that Naruto couldn't easily do it. To utilize the technique at all, he first had to create a shadow clone which required its own hand sign, and then he had to use that shadow clone to start forming the Rasengan in his hand. But as his proficiency and skill with the technique continued to increase, eventually, like Jiraiya, Naruto no longer required the usage of a Shadow Clone to do this. But the Rasengan wasn't the only technique to drop hand signs. There were other techniques. Dojutsu techniques, while not technically without hand signs, generally didn't require them to cast. Such a thing could be seen within the Sharingan line of Dojutsu. The Sharingan itself had no hand signs and was mostly just for casting Genjutsu. That being said, Genjutsu without Sharingan generally required hand signs or some other medium, like a flute or, I guess, a toad's throat. But after the Sharingan, when the Mangekyo was introduced, it came with other unique abilities, among which were the Susano and two others. These abilities did not require any hand signs, which is okay, the Jutsu is using the Dojutsu as the medium. Unless it's Susano, which is then apparently disconnected from the Sharingan totally after awakening. The dual Mangekyo awakening merely awakens the Susano in you. It doesn't maintain it, as Madara, even when he had them sexy empty sockets, still managed to use a Susano. That opens up a whole new can of worms. Was Kakashi's Susano something he borrowed from Obito? Was it his own? And why can't he still use it even without his Sharingan? Gotta be his own personal Susano. It has the scar on its eye like Kakashi does, so why not let him keep it like Madara did? 
I'm getting off topic here. Let's return to hand signs. Then we get to the Rinnegan, which actually utilized hand signs more than its predecessors ever did. While it wasn't much, we did see the Animal Path utilize them, and when Madara was calling down his twin meteorites, not only did he need to make a hand sign, but his four-armed Susano needed to make two different hand signs, combining to form a total of three hand signs. But as time went along and we moved deeper into the war arc, we saw less and less shinobi utilizing these hand signs. And yes, I'm aware that it's because the techniques used are generally innate. Just like Kimimaro's bones, a lot of techniques are innate. It's like asking why Spider-Man doesn't need to weave hand signs to stick to a wall. It's genetic. Not all Kekai Genkai are like that, but any biological abilities like that tend to not require hand signs. But those aren't the only times we see ninjutsu used without hand signs. We see jutsu that were previously established to require hand signs being used without them later on. One case off the top of my head is Chidori. That doesn't require any hand signs anymore. It's become a thing within the Naruto series that the more skill a shinobi has, the less hand signs they have to use. But from what I've seen, there's a point where one doesn't even need to utilize signs at all, which sort of just removes one of the best parts about the series. Like, I know with that skill you should be able to do it better. Maybe some jutsu have redundant hand signs, treating it like the hand signs are coding the very energy you're sending out. But now imagine a computer program working without any coding at all. That's how it seems. If they wanted to show more skill with ninjutsu, they should have developed the ability to weave hand signs with only one hand. That was cool. Do you remember when Haku did it in the Land of Waves arc? It was mind-blowing, not only for the characters, but for us as well. And while not technically one-handed, I loved watching times where Naruto and Sasuke had to weave hand signs together. Hand signs were more than just cool looking, but they were also a limit that characters had to work around. Coming from someone who has seen powerful OCs, made powerful OCs, and read stories and played D&D style games over Discord with people, sometimes too many strengths and too few weaknesses not only make a character a pain to fight, but it also makes them boring as well. Some of the best OCs are ones with weaknesses that are just so bad that they make people wonder how you even play a character like that at all. Imagine playing a Naruto Shinobi with no arms. How do you get past that? Well, maybe you do signs with your feet. Hand signs were a limitation that characters had to work around. It would have been a good way to properly nerf Sasuke and Naruto for the upcoming series of Boruto as well. Just have them limited in jutsu because of the loss of an arm. And what about Orochimaru? Hiruzen sealed his arms to stop him from doing ninjutsu. Hand signs are integral to the power system's interesting nature and ability to function properly. When you just strip those away, it becomes basically Dragon Ball. Not putting down Dragon Ball, by the way. If you know me, you know I love me some Goku. Maybe about as much as Naruto, actually, but the point remains. When you strip away the weaknesses that provided challenges for characters in battle, those battles start becoming the same old, same old. It added a whole new dimension to battles in Naruto. But as the concept of powerful legend-level ninjutsu began to rise, less and less hand signs were needed. And so, when the inevitable system killer called Power Creep appeared, and Kishimoto found himself having to include more ninjutsu and characters of that level, hand signs became a thing of the past. And I find that almost tragic, but that's just my two cents. What do you think? Do you miss the prevalence of hand signs and how higher ranking ninjutsu used to require more and more? If so, let me know down in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when more videos like this drop. And while you're at it, check out these other great videos from the channel. Anyway, until next time, peace out.